ersten Mal den Mond. Roger, Eagle, and you are safe for T1. Over. Eagle, you are safe for T1. For hours, nobody knew exactly where on the moon their astronauts really were. It was an embarrassment to flight control if the astronauts were lost up there on the moon. When Neil Armstrong had steered Eagle beyond the planned landing site, he put down in an area some distance away from the one selected. At the same time, a Soviet spacecraft was attempting a landing on the moon. The Soviet moonshot was for propaganda. The aim of their unmanned vehicle was to scoop up some moon rocks and beat Apollo 11 back to Earth. You're looking good here. Okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. After our moon, take care of the people. We're going to be busy here, Neil Armstrong just said. They were also overcome, those two men, and for a moment, they wanted no communication with mission control. What they did first was simple. They shook hands. Then, more personal things. Buzz Aldrin had some wine from a small silver chalice. He took communion. Houston, uh, this is Neil, radio check. Neil, this is Houston. Loud Several clear. hours later, break, the most break. dramatic moment of the mission. Neil Armstrong was about to step on the moon. Okay, Houston, I'm on the porch. Roger, Neil. Remind him as soon as he tethers the camera of contingency sample. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming. The billion people watching mostly ignored the science and engineering. They all knew what it was to put a foot to the ground. Uh, at the foot of the ladder, the lamb footbeds are only uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. Now a step was to be taken on a heavenly body that had never been touched by any living thing from Earth. I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. That's a small step for a man, that's a giant leap for mankind. There had never before been a footprint on the moon. Oh, that looks beautiful from here, Neil. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very pretty out here. As a caution, at first only one astronaut was sent to the moon's surface. For a time, Buzz Aldrin stayed in the limb in case they had to leave in a hurry. He recorded the collection of the first rock samples. Good for you. Okay, ready for me to come out? Yeah, just stand by a second. I'll move there were many fears. The original fear was that the surface of the moon would collapse under their weight and the weight of the limb. Still another, that man would succumb to the heat and cold of the moon. The dark of the moon is almost 250 degrees below freezing. The bright of the moon is 250 degrees above boiling. There was no atmosphere to shield them from the deep rays of the sun or from the micrometeorites that might go through their spacesuits like a bullet through butter. Now I want to uh, back up and partially close the hatch, making sure not to lock it on my way out. <laughs> Pickly good thought. That's our home for the next couple of hours. We want to take good care of it. The greatest fear was that somehow there was something deadly or viral that would not only sicken the astronauts, but would poison the whole Earth if they returned with a bit of the moon. And the gear pad? Nothing like this happened. It's a very simple matter to hop down from one step to the next. Yes, I found to be very comfortable, and uh, and walking is also very comfortable. It's a good step. Yep. About a three-footer. Buzz Aldrin has just landed on the moon. Beautiful view. Is that something? Magnificent sight out here. Magnificent desolation. It was a Colts canter. It was a cosmic jig. Put up the rocker.
Houston, you have approximately three minutes until you must commence your EVA termination activity. Over. They were called back to the limb, back to that part of the mission that had no alternative system. It either worked or it didn't work. Neil, this is Houston. We'd like you all to get two core tubes and the solar wind experiment. Two core tubes and the solar wind, over. No one had ever gotten to the moon, much less ascended from it. Uh, Anything more before I head on up, Bruce? Negative. Head on up the ladder, Buzz. Adios, amigo. The whole thing was so strange that in some skeptical human hearts, there later grew the suspicion that these ghostly black and white images were an American CIA trick, that this all came from a back lot in Hollywood, and there really was nobody on the moon. How you doing, Buzz? I'm okay. Nobody knew it for some time, but the Russian space mission crashed just a few miles away from them. It probably crashed because it was unmanned. It could not do the last-minute evasive maneuvers Armstrong had done. It was reported that the Soviet vehicle hit the moon at some 300 miles an hour and exploded. The Russian astronauts always expected it would. Months before, they had sent two small medallions to the American astronauts commemorating the two Soviet flyers who had died in their space program. Our men left the Russian badges on the moon along with a small piece of wood from the Wright brothers' first airplane. We also left medallions for the Americans who had died in our space efforts. Neil, this is Houston. Did you get the Asselbaugh magazine? Houston, did you get the Asselbaugh magazine? Yes, I did. And we got about, uh, I'd say, 20 pounds of uh, carefully selected, if not documented, samples. Uh, Houston, uh, Roger, well done, Alex. Get the second box. Uh, Unofficial time off the surface at 1-11-37-32. When President Kennedy had ordered this mission nine years earlier, he had said we'd get a man to the moon and bring him home safely. Now that pledge of safety was to have its greatest test. Newport, Rhode Island, the day man landed on the moon. Later in the day, the Newport Jazz Festival would take place here. Sleeping anywhere the city officials would permit were the young. To be young in the 60s was different. An unpopular war was going on. American political life was turbulent. The old owned everything and controlled everything. To be young in the 60s was to have your own fashions and your own ideals, and especially your own music. A major issue in 1969 was power. The energy derived from coal or oil or atoms was soiling, corrupting the physical world. Our need for electricity was tearing mountains apart, killing our rivers, dirtying our air. The whole country was beginning to understand that power not only corrupts, power pollutes. The fact was, though, that America lived by its complicated, interwoven technology, and we weren't going to give it up. Until we found the answer to pollution, we would continue to move to our beautiful and sometimes dangerous rhythms. I think they have a to wear. I put an end to all their courtship. I sent him silent to his grave. They asked him to go on. Without them, if there are strife, under these two bold and wicked they took away the young man's life. Whose time was it? Who did July 20th, 1969 really belong to? At the Newport Jazz Festival, when the Master of Ceremonies tried to announce Americans had landed on the moon, the young ones knew, but they didn't want to hear. You might, you might be interested to know that... Uh... <laughs> Thank you.
and make it. Hey, they just landed on the moon, you know? They're all there. Did you know that? We made the moon. Two men were on the moon. One man was circling it. The time had come for the two men to lift off the moon and join the man in the rescue ship. What if they couldn't fire the ascent engine? There was no rescue plan if they couldn't get the limb off the surface. The closest human was Mike Collins. He could circle them, but that was all he could do. Collins later wrote that he had decided not to die circling. He'd stay there as long as he could, but then he'd come home alone and live with his guilt for the rest of his life. Eagle Houston, now you're looking good to us. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, fourth stage, engine arm ascent, proceed. Safety was seven long minutes away. The engine had to burn evenly all the way. Thousand feet high, 80 feet uh, per second vertical rise. Eagle Houston, to request manual start override. Roger. They'd be in danger until they reached 50,000 feet where Collins could rescue them. So far, flawless. From Collins' window, here they come. It's the limb. What they were supposed to do is throw a switch giving control of the operation to Mike Collins in Columbia. They forgot to do it. From the limb window, they see the command module moving into position. Collins inside doesn't know there's a problem. The limb draws closer and drifts to meet the probe. Mike Collins begins the final maneuvers for docking. The link-up is critical. If it doesn't work, the limb crew won't be able to enter the command module for the voyage home. If the error isn't corrected, the danger is that the limb could tear free. The astronauts are in for a rough docking. Contact. At first, Collins barely felt the bump. Then a violent movement. Mike reported, all hell broke loose. The docking is out of his control. After the switch is finally thrown, it holds fast. They're safe. The two men who had landed on the moon joined the man who had circled it. The lunar lander had served its purpose. It was abandoned. It would circle the moon until slowly the moon's gravity would capture it. Then it would crash in some unrecorded spot. Since the moon has neither atmosphere nor life, the carcass of the limb will not rot. It will remain on the moon forever. Mike Collins fires his rocket again to get them out of lunar orbit and to begin a long three-day journey back to Earth. 